Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to JR Hikes. I'm JR and today I'm going to go over just about every piece of gear that I'm going to be carrying on the John Muir Trail in July. So hang out with me and we'll get to it right away. Okay, so first up on my gear list for the JMT obviously is going to be what pack am I going to be carrying. Uh, the Hyperlite uh, Mountain Gear 3400 Windrider. Now, the one reason why I like this pack, and I'm going to keep it brief because I've done another video on this particular pack. So if you want to watch that, uh, there is a video card up there you can click on if you want to watch that video. But with the 3400 Windrider, I love it because of the fact it is capable to be up to 55 liters. It has these massive side pockets so that I can carry two one liter bottles on, on the outsides of each side. So total, I can carry up to four liters. Also, it's got this big massive pocket on the back. Okay, so I've mounted on the back uh, a Dyneema bag that is going to hold my, that's gonna hold my power bank. Uh, and then I'll have a, uh, a line run out to that to my Renogy solar panel. So that's going to be set up on the outside so that I could charge uh, my power bank while I'm out there because it's my understanding on a JMT, like 90% of it's going to be above tree line. So I'm going to be able to charge uh, that battery bank to keep all of my other accessories that I need charged on my electronics charged. So that is going to be set up like that. Uh, it is obviously it's a roll top design, but uh, another accessory that I added to it, uh, I did put the Z Packs bottle holder on it. I was using the Gossamer Gear uh, water bottle holder, but um, I found on several different trips, like uh, I did the Virginia Triple Crown with it, I did the uh, Foothills in South Carolina with it, and the one thing that I found that I didn't like about it was I was fighting putting the bottle inside of the sleeve. So I went to the z uh, It is the mesh, just like it is on the, on the back side of this. It's very easy. It's got a nice, uh, solid, like a plastic ring. It's almost like a, uh, it almost feels like a good size zip tie uh, that keeps that mouth open so that I can slide a bottle in there, which I'm really happy with that. So I'm anxious to get to use that on trail. Now, also, I will be having my uh, Peak Design camera clip on here so that I can secure the camera uh, to my chest. And also, uh, a new addition is the, is the Z-Pax FUPA. Uh, this, I believe, I'm going to mount to the front of this so that as it's on me, uh, it's, it's going to go across my chest like that. And then I'm going to run, I believe this is how I'm going to do it, I'm going to run my sternum strap through this part here. and go straight across to the other side. And then I snap that in here and now that's gonna go across my chest and give me a good pouch there to put my phone, backup batteries and all of that stuff in a nice secure location across my chest. So I think that's how I'm gonna do that. Okay, that leads me to my sleep system, which is number two out of the big three. Uh, basically what I'm going to be carrying is, uh, first off, I'll be, I'll be sleeping in the Big Agnes, uh, Fish Hawk 30 degree bag. It's my understanding that temperatures shouldn't get down below the 40 degree area. So a 30 degree bag should be plenty for me. If not, I'll layer up. In my last trip when I was in, uh, the foothills of South Carolina, it got down to 33 degrees two of those nights out of the seven or eight. Uh, so all I did was basically just uh, throw on my puffy jacket, my pants, and I was good to go. So uh, we'll be bringing that. Uh, I am going to be stuffing that in the Hyperlite stuff pods. Now, I, I love these things because of the fact that it allows me to compartmentalize uh, the larger things that are in my pack so that once I reach in to grab things, there's uh, no tiny little stuff sacks here and there. It's literally just three stuff packs and that's it along with the bear canister that I have to bring with me. So 
the Hyperlite Stuff Pack. Uh, I am going to be taking the Nemo Tensor uh, regular that is insulated. I'll be taking that along with me, uh, as well as the inflation bag. I'll take that with me. And then also the Outdoor Vitals uh, Stuff Pillow, which I'm really happy with this. I've used it on quite a few trips. And that is what it looks like when everything's stuffed in there. That does have my Big Agnes sleeping bag in it. Also has the pillow, the inflation, the inflation bag, and the Nemo Tensor. That will go in the bottom of my pack, and that is my sleep system. Okay, and last of the big three is my tent. Uh, and that is the same tent that I've been using for probably the past six or seven trips that I've been on, at least the past year and a half, uh, is the Gossamer Gear, the two. Uh, really happy with this tent. Inside of this Hyperlite Mountain Gear stuff sack, which is a large stuff sack, um, uh, I got the large so that it compresses down nice because I'm going to need to slide this in behind my bear canister uh, to kind of take up that little bit of room so that that canister doesn't move around in there. Uh, but that does have the, I believe it's a 1443R Tyvek ground sheet that's in there. I did cut that to size to the, the, the Gossamer Gear tent, uh, and I will be bringing that with me. Also, I'll go ahead and mention now I'll be bringing the... Um, uh, the, the poles that I've been using for the longest time, and that's, and that's the uh, Alpine Carbon Corks by uh, Black Diamond. I've had really good luck with these, uh, as you've seen in another video, that I did lose a pair. Ended up buying the exact same pair because I'm so happy with the way these things work. They're sturdy. Uh, the uh, flick locks on here work really well. Okay, next up is clothing. Uh, what am I going to wear on trail? Let's start kind of like right here in this row right here. This is typically what I wear when I'm on trail. Uh, basically what it is, uh, I wear uh, the, uh, it's a, uh, a long sleeve uh, Arcteryx uh, shirt that goes underneath everything. That's kind of like my, uh, my base layer. Uh, I can interchange with this t-shirt. This is uh, basically, this is all synthetic, but this is a, um, just a, a starter t-shirt uh, that I really like. Uh, it doesn't have the seam across the top of the shoulders so that it, it sits nice and uh, comfortable with the pack. Uh, I do pretty much all the time wear three quarter length uh, men's leggings. Uh, I love these things. These are called all in motion. I got these from Target. Uh, there is a side pocket on it so that I can slide my phone down in there. Um, but these things are great. Believe it or not, they keep me relatively cool as well. Uh, and then over the top of that, I got some New Balance uh, running shorts. Uh, I picked these up online. Um, I'm really happy with them so far. I haven't had a chance to wear them on trail yet. So then also I've got a pair of uh, ex officio underwear. I started wearing those instead of the Hanes that I normally wear. Uh, I started wearing these when I did the Foothills trip and I love these underwear. They are fantastic. Now, uh, I do have a pair of darn tough socks. These are the thicker wool socks. So these will be what I'm going to wear on the outside of the Njinji toe socks. Um, and I wear these uh, basically for the simple fact that I have not gotten blisters yet. I do have a backup pair of socks with a backup uh, pair of liners. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of stream crossings, that sort of thing, wet feet, snow and everything. So I am going to bring backups. These are my camp socks. So these are just um, a pair of Belegas. Uh, they are wool as well. Uh, there is an extra pair of ex officio underwear that I'll be bringing as well uh, for camp at night or if things happen. Uh, I also have uh, the Ultra Gators. Uh, a lot of people ask, are gators worth it? Do you need gators? Uh, on past trips that I've had, uh, not worn gators. Uh, I've found myself getting rocks in my shoe, uh, sand, dirt, and dust in my shoe. Uh, I also have a spare pair of New Balance shorts that I'll be bringing. Uh, these are my camp pants as well as wind pants. Uh, these are made by that same company, uh, All in Motion from Target. Um, they are lightweight, breathable, they are very cool, but they do protect against the wind. So I will be bringing those for camp and as far as wind protection. And I'm also bringing sunglasses. 
so I've got my uh, Tafasi Intense sunglasses. I'll be bringing those with me. Uh, these things are extremely lightweight. They were only $25, so if I lose them or break them, uh, not all is lost. Now, I am on the fence about a hat. A lot of folks are saying bring a wide-brimmed hat because of the sun on your neck um, and uh, on your face. So a wide-brimmed hat basically takes care of that. Here's where I'm on the fence. I wear this hat on just about every trip that I do lately. It's, uh, it looks like a Taco Bell hat. Yes, it does. Uh, but it is an outdoor research hat. I've been wearing this hat uh, on quite a few trips. So uh, my remedy for that is I will be bringing a buff. So in the event that I need some neck protection, if I need something to cover my face up with, uh, ears, I've got a buff with me. So I'm on the fence as to whether or not I'm going to be bringing this wide-brimmed hat. It's a lot heavier than uh, Outdoor Research Trucker hat, so we'll see how that goes. Everything is going to get stuffed inside of this small Hyperlite Mountain Gear uh, stuff pod, which I will show you here in a minute once I go over everything. So that's what the clothes are stored in. I am bringing the Patagonia Nano puffy jacket, which I've worn on several trips. I will continue to wear this on several trips. Uh, this is just a Polar Tech, um, kind of like a, a, a wool beanie. I bring that with me mostly for camp. Uh, I'm bringing outdoor research, uh, no finger gloves uh, for sun protection. Uh, I've heard a lot of things about, a lot of good things about these uh, in the Sierra. I have the outdoor research helium 2 rain jacket uh, this has gone with me on every trip now granted this is a gray one if you see me in the foothills you will have seen the gordon's fisherman rain jacket that i wore then that is an extra large jr is losing weight outdoor research helium 2 and then i always bring a bandana with me that i hang from my shoulder strap so that i can wipe my face off wipe my hands off and then obviously like i mentioned before my buff uh, something that I've had to pick up uh, ever since the foothills, uh, I may have to start wearing ankle support. I'm going to see how my ankles are doing before then, but uh, these are two ankle sleeves, and then inside of that are compression straps uh, that wrap around to give me support for my tendon on the outside of my foot. Okay, next up is footwear. Uh, it is pretty obvious I'm going to wear the same shoes that I wore uh, when I was on the uh, foothills. Uh, that would be the uh, the Ultra Superior 4.0s. Really happy with these. Um, I may, I may jump into the Lone Peak Mids. I believe they still make the, uh, the 4.5s in a mid. I'm not sure. And then also obviously my uh, trusty Croc Swift waters, which I have worn uh, for pretty much uh, base camp shoes, a uh, couple of uh, creek crossings at Red River Gorge, uh, and obviously there's going to be a ton of creek crossings uh, out there in, on the John Muir. So that pretty much wraps up my footwear and what I'm going to be wearing on my feet. Okay, next up is my cook set. Now, a lot of people make fun of me because I use two different pots. Uh, I do carry a coffee mug and I carry my pot. So that's for boiling water, that's for making ramen bombs, uh, whatever. Uh, this is the Tokes 900. Uh, I, I bring this separately because of the fact that I'm going to make ramen noodles. I'm going to make uh, mashed potatoes. Uh, those types of things are going to be made inside of this canister. I do not want my coffee in the morning tasting like ramen noodles. Call me crazy. I've got the Tokes 550 and I've got the 900. I'm bringing the MSR Pocket Rocket. Now, those of you that know me and have seen me in the past, uh, I was using the, uh, the Jet Boil Mighty Mo, uh, which I did a giveaway on. And uh, I was really happy with that, but I can shave a couple ounces to make up for the fact that I'm bringing an additional pot uh, with the... Uh, with the MSR Pocket Rocket. Uh, it is a great stove, really happy with it. Uh, I am on the fence as to whether or not I'm going to be resupplying and picking up 
Uh, the 100 gram canisters or if I'm going to stick with carrying a 230 the entire trip. For those of you that, that, uh, that have a good grasp on uh, fuel and how well it burns at altitude, which I'm not familiar with, leave it in the comment section below. Did you carry a 230 the entire trip? Did it last? Did you have to resupply? Am I good with 100s? Uh, every resupply, every other resupply, let me know in the comment section below. I greatly appreciate that. And then also I've got the, uh, uh, the Tokes long-handled spoon, which is uh, a lifesaver for me. I love this thing, so I'm sorry, it's not, it's a Vulcan, uh, it's not Tokes. Uh, so really happy with that also. And then I have my cloth uh, that I use there. So what I do is I take my cloth, I wrap my stove inside of that, put that inside the 550, put the lid on the 550. Then take that, put that inside of its sleeve. Yes, I do bring two sleeves. I know that's overkill. It's a little added weight, but I really don't care. <laughs> so I slide that thing in there, zip it shut. Take that, put it inside of the 900. There. Now inside of the side of the 900, there's a sleeve. Uh, I keep my Bic lighter in there for that so that I can so I can ignite my stove and then I take this put it inside of its own sleeve these things really don't weigh that much to me I know you add them up ounce grams ounces pounds pain I get it so that is basically my cook setup in its entirety right there Next up is going to be my water filtration now normally I do a gravity feed I'll have a three liter C knock um, with a, uh, a length of hose and I'll use uh, the Sawyer squeeze uh, hang the bag filter my water that way um, two reasons why I'm not going to be doing that on this trip one uh, I did learn while I was on the foothills uh, in South Carolina uh, is the ease of carrying like a liter or a liter and a half smart water bottle having this affixed to that so that I can have that liter or liter and a half water bottle as a dirty water supply. Uh, have this on the top of it, then I'll have like a 700 uh, that I can have in my, on my uh, chest strap and then just squeeze in there. It, it's been made clear to me that water is overly abundant on this trail, so chances are I'm not gonna have to worry about, uh, you know, carrying, uh, a large amount of water with me. What I do plan on doing is bringing an extra empty uh, liter or liter and a half so that I can carry as much as three liters with me. Okay, so all the miscellaneous things that I'm going to bring. I've got uh, got a sack of uh, shit tickets there. So toilet paper. I've got my spot uh, by Black Diamond. I've got that in here. Uh, also, I carry uh, a tube of Carmex. Um, I do that for two reasons. One, obviously, for uh, chapped lips, but two, you put a little up around your, your nostril area. Uh, it also helps you to breathe at night, helps me to breathe at night. So, a uh, little Carmex there. Uh, Lotrimin, uh, great for in between the toes, anything like that, because obviously you're going to be wading through some water, so there's a good possibility of a little fungal action happening. So I will be bringing some of that. Uh, also, Precaritin, uh, bringing that with me because of the fact that I am going to be out there in the middle of July. Good possibility that I'm going to be running into some bugs. Uh, I always bring a compass and a thermometer with me. Pick this thing up at REI. I believe it was like eight bucks or seven bucks, something like that. Uh, but this thing has done me pretty good, pretty solid. Uh, so I hang, usually have that hanging from my pack. Uh, little compass and uh, obviously the shovel I got the deuce of spades uh, it is the number three I don't know why I went with the bigger one I think when I was at REI they didn't have anything smaller than this at the time uh, but uh, still under a uh, under an ounce deuce of spades uh, obviously then I got my crest toothpaste fold up toothbrush use this thing for a while now uh, also have a head net because bugs and body glide never leave home without it always have body glide uh, 
got some hand sanitizer. Uh, make sure I keep my hand sanitized after I do the do. Uh, also, uh, I've got a, a, a pill bottle that I always carry with me. Uh, if you've seen the foothills, you've seen the instance I ran into with the two guys on like the third or the second to the last day on trail. Uh, Luco tape wrapped around the outside of the pill bottle. It is extremely important to make sure that you have Luco tape for blisters. Uh, inside of that, I carry my extra Bic lighter and a couple of uh, waterproof matches uh, and, a, uh, and a little striking pad that came off of the box. So keep those handy with me inside of the pill bottle. Also inside of the pill bottle, uh, because I'm going to be out, this is my first multi-week trip. Uh, I've got some lightweight uh, toenail clippers and fingernail clippers that I'm going to be bringing with me. Also, I have the tiny miniature uh, little Swiss Army knife. Um, it's got a pair of scissors on it, some tweezers. It's got a little pick in there, gets the stuff out of your teeth, whatnot, and obviously a knife, so I'll be bringing that with me. Um, dental floss, bringing that with me. Uh, also, I've always brought a tennis ball with me to roll out my feet at the end of the night. Um, it's always served me good, bring that with me. Uh, got my first aid kit, which is a couple of butterfly bandages. Uh, also, uh, got a, a fingernail knuckle band-aid and a couple of band-aids in there for other places. Uh, and then this, obviously, is my pill bag. I keep that with me. It has my uh, Imatrex with because I do get uh, migraine headaches. I have yet to have one on trail. Obviously, there's Excedrin migraine in there just to get, uh, if, uh, if things get heated up and started in a migraine. Um, I've got bare aspirin that I take every morning. There's some Aleve in the event that I run into some joint problems uh, or muscle problems. Uh, and then I believe there is also some anti-diarrhea pills in there as well. So I keep that pill bag with me. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, I am going to be bringing... A day pack with me uh, a lot of you may say hey you don't need that it's added weight here's why uh, I am going to be flying obviously to get to California uh, I'm going to be checking my pack I'm gonna want something to carry everything onto the plane that I'm going to be holding on my person while I'm on the plane so first and foremost I am going to have a pack uh, to carry that stuff in uh, as well as when I venture out and do Half Dome, I have permits for Half Dome. Uh, I do want to bring this with me so that I don't have to carry my entire 35, 40 pound pack all the way up those cables. I don't know if I want to leave it right there at the bottom, uh, but uh, I will be bringing a day pack with me uh, for those reasons. And then maybe even at the summit of Mount Whitney, I may not want to bring my pack with me, but I'm going to want to bring bottles of water and that type of thing, spend some time up there, who knows maybe bring my coffee, uh, who knows, but I am going to be bringing this. It's extremely lightweight. I think it weighs like an ounce and a half. So that's pretty much it for all the miscellaneous BS. Okay. So this is pretty much what's going to go inside of my pack. There shouldn't be any more than this. Inside of this, I have the Nemo tensor. I have the blow up sack that goes along with that, my pillow and my sleeping bag. Inside of here, I have my clothes. I have uh, all of my backup socks, uh, my gloves, my ankle braces. Uh, I also have inside of here my Diddy, all of my Diddy stuff, the Ziploc bag for that type of stuff. Uh, and then in here, obviously, I have my tent. Uh, no, I am not in any way affiliated with Hyperlite Mountain Gear. I am just extremely impressed with this whole organizational pod setup. So tent, clothes, sleeping system, and this behemoth. I am not excited about carrying this with me. This is the BV500 bear canister. Uh, I did take it with me on the foothills, which I've talked a lot about, uh, but I did kind of use that as a shakedown hike for this trip. Uh, I am not excited about taking this with me. This weighs three pounds all by itself, but it is required um, by every place that the JMT runs through. So I have to bring this with me. And then obviously my cook set. This is all that is going to slide down inside of that pack. All of my camera gear and everything else is going to be on the outside of the pack. 
And this is everything that I'm going to carry that is going to enable me to film this entire project. That's camera, phone, batteries, everything. This is going to be stored on the front of my person. It is not going to be in the backpack. So hopefully that will give me a little bit of an offset of the weight uh, that I'm going to be carrying. This setup right here, as you see, it weighs about six pounds. So there goes a lot into it to film this project. So basically, let's just start over here. I'm going to be carrying the Joby 3K Gorillapod. Uh, this has done great for me in the past. Uh, it's, you can wrap it around trees. It's great for those walk away shots uh, and, uh, uh, and that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm really happy with this. Uh, we'll be bringing that along with me. The only concern that I have right now is how I'm actually going to mount this uh, to a backpack strap or to my waist belt or something to that effect. Uh, I also have another tripod that is the GoPro mount tripod, it is a telescoping tripod, and uh, it is very small, very lightweight, and I'm going to be using this for the DJI action and uh, the pocket, the Osmo pocket. One thing that is not shown right here uh, is my Canon M50, uh, which that is above where I'm doing my top-down shot, so that I will be bringing that along with me. I believe it's going to have the 11 to 35 uh, lens. And uh, on top of that will be the uh, Rode Video Micro. Uh, that's going to give me uh, pretty good sound quality for the walking shots. Uh, the vlog shots also has the dead cat on it. So uh, that will cut down on wind noise quite a bit. So that'll be coming with me. Um, I do have uh, my rocket blaster, rocket puffer, so that I can clean the sensor off uh, of my mirrorless camera. I also have in this bag a small cloth that I can use uh, to clean things off, uh, lenses and that sort of thing, uh, if need be. Uh, I am going to be storing that uh, in the Z-Pax Fupa. Uh, I did pick up a Renogy uh, solar panel. That's probably one of the things that I'm curious to see how it works. Uh, the most uh, is going to be the solar panel. It is two 10 watt solar panels. There is a USB port on the back so that I can plug in something and charge. Uh, I'll have a line running from that to my battery bank. I am bringing the uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. That is my phone. Uh, I also have uh, a Dyneema bag here that has two uh, Hyperlite Mountain Gear carabiners. Uh, that I will probably hang on my back, uh, on the outside of my pack, so that I can put the uh, battery bank in there um, and uh, keep that secure and run the cable to it from the Renogy uh, solar, panel, solar panel so that I can keep that charging uh, on my back. So that's there as well. Uh, and then I have the Garmin InReach Explorer Plus. That is going to give me all of my GPS if, as needed. Uh, those of you at home that want to follow me, I'll put up a link on my Facebook and the JR Hikes Facebook page uh, so that you can follow the pings as I go along. Uh, these are all of the batteries that I'm going to be using along with the Osmo Action. Uh, the Osmo Action, I did pick this up and I, I used it for the first time in the uh, foothills in South Carolina. Uh, I was really happy with this. Uh, the only thing that I was concerned with, and I made mention of it in the video, if you want to watch that video, I'll put a card up uh, right here, right here, uh, put a card up so you can check that video out, um, was the battery life of this thing. I wasn't really sold on the fact that these batteries um, don't last very long. Uh, so if you have the Rocksteady on, which the Rocksteady is basically like an anti-shake software in there, uh, if you have that on and you're shooting in uh, 2.7K or 4K, it really sucks the life out of the batteries. So I will be bringing that with me. Um, and there are three batteries for that. Um, so definitely uh, keep those in a rotation so I can keep those charged. Uh, two batteries for the Canon M50. And inside of here is a small rig case uh, that holds all of my SD cards. So... Uh, I've got uh, 256 gig for the Osmo Pocket, 256 gig for the Osmo Action, and then another 256 gig for uh, the uh, M50. So 
that's going to be a total of 500 gigabytes for each device. Uh, and then I also have a couple of backup uh, cards here as well. Uh, this small rig case is awesome. It is extremely durable. It's like an aluminum case. Uh, and then it slides in and there's a bearing in there uh, that locks that into place, if I can get that in there properly. Uh, there's a bearing in there that holds it into place, um, and that's going to keep those things from getting damaged. So, uh, really great to have that with me. Uh, there is a uh, an action camera mount that I bought that also goes along with the Peak Design clip that is going to be on my chest on the uh, uh, on the chest strap of my Hyperlite Mountain Gear pack, and uh, that will slide in there so I can get some nice POV shots. Uh, and then also, obviously, there's the mount that will be on the Canon M50 that goes in there as well. So, and then above that, I'm bringing the Osmo Pocket. Uh, the DJI Osmo Pocket is a great, uh, it's a great camera. I, I, I was on the fence as to whether or not I was going to bring it. Uh, obviously, in relation to uh, bringing the Osmo Action, I wondered if that was going to be overkill or not. But as light as this thing is... Um, the stabilization on this is extremely, extremely great. So I'm probably going to get a lot of B-roll with this. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe some of those walking shots across creek crossings and, and, and whatnot. So definitely bringing the Osmo uh, Action and the Osmo Pocket. Uh, I do have a couple of charging cables here. Uh, I have the Anchor. Uh, this is a um, the uh, IQ... Not really. I'm going to put all this stuff up on the screen because I don't know all the technical aspects of it. Uh, but it is a power port, and basically what it is is it has a, a USB-C output, and it also has a USB output to charge. Um, so I'm going to have this so whenever I'm in, say, Tuolumne Meadows or Reds Meadow uh, VVR, I can uh, plug this into the wall and, uh, and charge up my power bank. Now, I did have uh, a... 26,800 milliamp uh, battery pack, which is actually this one right here. Um, this is a broken one I got replaced. Um, but this was made by a company called Zendor. And the thing that I ran into with this, uh, I used this on the, uh, on the foothills, uh, 77 miles, and I char started charging everything that I needed charged on the second or the third day and it was already down to 60%. This thing ran out really fast. So uh, I went ahead and opted to buy a RAV Power 32,000 milliamp hour battery bank. This thing is a beast. Now when I say it's a beast, the un <laughs> kind of the, uh, the caveat that comes along with this, it is heavy. This thing is a tank. It weighs about a pound and a half by itself but I'm hoping that it's going to last me for the entire week in between resupplies to charge it. Now, like I said, I am going to have this inside of this pack here uh, so that I can run a, uh, a power cable from it to the Renogy, and hopefully that's going to keep that charged uh, throughout the trip and you know give me an opportunity to charge off of that, and I'm not going to have any gaps in power like I did in the foothills. I literally had to forego my drone because I needed to drain the power out of those drone batteries so that I could uh, continue to film uh, on the Osmo Action and on my, my, my phone. So uh, obviously I'm bringing uh, backup battery charging blocks for that uh, for the, uh, the Osmo Action and the Osmo Pocket and here is the case for the Osmo uh, Pocket. Um, that's going to come along with me as well. So basically that is my setup as far as electronics go. It is going to be heavy, but it is going to be worth it for me. I'm, I have to bring it with me, uh, so I need to be prepared for anything that I might encounter with that. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I appreciate you making it through the entire video. If there's anything that you have, comments or questions that you want to go ahead and ask, put that down in the comment section below. Any questions about the gear, any suggestions that you may have, I'd love to hear it. Go ahead and put that down in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. I would greatly appreciate it. If you found that this video was valuable to you and you learned some things from it, go ahead and hit that like button for me. 
Uh, and uh, that notification bell after you subscribe would be great. That way you're notified anytime a new video comes out. I would greatly appreciate that as well. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on down the trail.